In this Starlink news update, Starlink is helping those affected by devastating flooding in western Germany. A judge says no to Viasat as they try to stop Starlink launches. And more details are revealed about plans for Starlink tests via land and sea. Germany has been hit hard by devastating historic flooding and Starlink has come in to help. Those floods released two months worth of rainfall in just two days. So you can imagine how devastating the impact is. You can see here in these pictures and videos as the country works to clean up after this disaster, Starlink is helping to keep them connected. Areas in Western Germany like Rhineland Palatinate have limited cell reception and internet. Starlink has since deployed 12 dishes with the goal of expanding to 35 and this will help keep people connected and of course this is all being offered free to citizens in those areas that are impacted. And this isn't the first time Starlink has been deployed in a natural disaster. Back in 2020 a small town in Washington called Malden was absolutely ravaged by wildfires and Starlink was deployed to help firefighters communicate on the ground. So this was way, way earlier in the beta phase, and I have a feeling that we'll see more of this trend in the future of Starlink being used in natural disasters. And it's not just Starlink that's stepping in. Several automakers have pitched in offering some free loaner cars and vehicles for rescue efforts. Tesla has also reached out to affected customers to let them know the supercharger network would be free to use in select areas. Viasat is getting a no from a judge after looking to put Starlink launches on pause. The geostationary satellite internet provider sought to freeze the numerous SpaceX launches and requested an environmental review. Viasat sued the FCC in May and asked judges for a stay that would halt SpaceX low Earth orbit satellite launches. Viasat alleged the FCC did not comply with the National Environmental Policy Act well, because it refused to conduct any environmental assessment. To achieve this, Viasat had to show that it's likely to win its lawsuit alleging the FCC improperly approved these launches, while a three-judge panel said that Viasat did not satisfy those stringent requirements needed for a stay pending court review. But the judge did grant a motion to expedite the appeal so the case could move more quickly. And finally, more details have been revealed for testing of Starlink by land and sea. Starlink is testing connectivity on multiple modes of transportation. Details from recent FCC filings reveal SpaceX plans to test two user terminals on a maritime vessel while embarked in U.S. territorial waters. This will last for two months, starting from September and ending in October. According to SpaceX, the test will demonstrate the Starlink user terminal's ability to function as an Earth station in motion in new geographic locations and sea states. Additionally, the company says that the test represents a notable incremental increase in the scope of previous tests as this experiment enables a more taxing set of environmental conditions than the relatively nominal sea states suitable for rocket booster recovery operations. Another filing also made at the end of June requested the FCC let SpaceX test the Starlink user terminals on both vessels and vehicles. The land test will take place within 250 kilometers or about 155 miles of Hawthorne, California and Redmond, Washington. As SpaceX outlines in its request, these tests will enable them to deeply understand the performance of those user terminals and the satellite constellation. The company plans to use a maximum of 20 Starlink user dishes for this test. And in addition to testing on land and sea, SpaceX has also secured another extension to the temporary authority for conducting tests on aircraft. This is in partnership with the U.S. Air Force. SpaceX originally requested that authority in July of last year. The FCC extended the permit in May. And now this extension broadens the scope of these tests by air, originally intended to be carried out on an aircraft flying at a maximum altitude of 40,000 feet. SpaceX first tests the equipment on the ground as part of the tests and then mounts a custom terminal on an aircraft. The terminal mounted on the aircraft is not your Starlink Dishy McFlatface user terminal at home. This is manufactured by Ball Aerospace. SpaceX will mount it on the aircraft and use a custom installation kit consisting of mechanical plates for the low profile antennas and a fairing to reduce wind drag in order to limit the impact to the aircraft for the installation. Pretty, pretty exciting stuff going on. 
If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. A lot of stuff going on in the world of Starlink. I know that many of you want to use Dishy McFlatface to stay connected, and I want to help you stay connected to everything that's going on with Starlink, so make sure to follow this channel as I bring you weekly updates on what's going on with Starlink. There's always something new happening. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.